This is the Washington Times front page for Wednesday, June 19th, 2024. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. President Biden has announced a program that will allow certain spouses of U.S. citizens without legal status to apply for permanent residency and eventually citizenship. Jeff Mordock and Stephen Dynan report the policy will allow roughly 500,000 spouses of U.S. citizens that are illegal immigrants an opportunity to apply for a parole in place program. If their qualifying application is approved, they would receive a temporary work permit, have three years to apply for a green card, and be shielded from deportation in the meantime. Republicans said the plan was legally suspect and called it an amnesty because it protects otherwise inadmissible migrants from deportation. Rural Americans are eager to access high-speed internet, but no homes or businesses have been connected to new broadband networks nearly three years after a multi-billion dollar federal program became law. Susan Fericcio reports the slow pace of funding allocation and compliance will push the modernization project's start dates to 2025 and 2026, according to a timeline officials outlined in a House Budget Committee hearing. Lawmakers say the Commerce Department, which is distributing the funds under the Broadband Equity Access and Deployment Program, is also attempting to regulate consumer rates. Alan Davidson, who runs the program as head of the Commerce Department's National Telecommunications and Information Administration, praised the pace of the program, telling Congress last month the first two years were consumed by planning and preparation. Russian President Vladimir Putin's highly anticipated summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un was heavy on optics, but light on substance. Andrew Salmon reports the two leaders signed a comprehensive strategic partnership in Pyongyang, but didn't release any details. Russian media discussed it only in broad generalities with references to past relations. Putin, however, noted it includes a provision of mutual assistance in the case of armed conflict. The number of college systems admitting high school students before they apply has more than doubled as four-year programs work to bolster flagging minority enrollments. Known as direct admissions, Sean Salai reports the practice allows high school students who maintain passing grades to bypass SAT testing, essay requirements, and other paperwork to go straight into second-tier regional colleges. Advocates say the trend saves time, resources, and paperwork for less selective colleges, which typically admit about 70% of applicants. Those schools have struggled the most with years of enrollment declines and pandemic-era cost increases that have reduced the number of low-income, Black, and Hispanic applicants. And finally, Microsoft is defending its extensive presence in China despite a hack linked to the country that ripped through its security last year. Ryan Lovely supports lawmakers expressed repeated concerns in a recent House Homeland Security Committee hearing that Microsoft's presence in China exposes the company's systems to snooping by Chinese Communist Party officials looking for access to American data and systems. Microsoft President Brad Smith told lawmakers his company is not complying with Chinese law, which requires it to work with the government. Find all today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or on the Washington Times app and find us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on social media at Wash Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerbo.